questions. I have um, a, a few more questions. This time has flown by, which is crazy. Uh, but I really, really want to know, um, do you believe in such a thing as justified terrorism? Um, in, we can use the most hyperbolic examples imaginable, like um, eco-terrorist uh, in the third world destroying an oil rig and it frees up a river that lets the villages fish again or so, something like that. Do you believe it is at any point justifiable to take such extreme actions for a better good, or do you think that that's never a justifiable venue for activism? Oh, wow. Not that wow. you have to condone anything or anything. <laughs> no. um, okay. Let, let, let me try to answer this in a different way. I'm not sure this is a satisfactory answer, but I'm sure you're familiar with Augustinian and just war theory in, in, the, in the Christian church, right? I, uh, war, is, I, war is bad. Uh, war uh, it kills all kinds of people. Uh, all kinds of damage usually lasts, you know, the effects last for decades. Wars often spur other wars. And yet there is a doctrine uh, in the Christian church, well, the Catholic church, because you know, when Augustine was around, there's only Catholics around, that under certain circumstances, violence, which is abhorrent to the Christian faith, Christians are supposed to turn the other cheek, blah, blah, blah. We all know what teachings of Jesus have to say about that. There are certain conditions under which violence is uh, okay, and or even required, which is what my understanding of just war theory, and trust me, I'm not a theologian. I haven't studied this at the yin yang. But if you think of it that way, you might go to the to the nth degree and say, well, if that's true, and we accept that there are reasons for just war. So for example, the you know, the decision to go up against Nazi Germany in 1939 was a just war. If we had not done that, uh, he would have kept uh, you know invading countries. He would have been kept enslaving and killing millions of people, and therefore we had no choice but to go to war against Germany and its allies in 1939. So if you use that same logic for terrorism, then you would say, well, the I'll take your, your, your hypothetical example of the oil refinery that's stopping a river or, or, or damaging a fishing ground or whatever it is you want to use. The presence of this particular facility will continue to cost lives either through malnutrition or starvation or lack of livelihood or whatever, the elimination of this facility will make things better and to try to uh, make the lives of the locals, uh, you know, make, make it easier for them. Ergo, I can therefore justify the elimination of this facility under any means possible. I could first of all ask, I can negotiate that they shut down and if they don't do so, then we can maybe protest to put pressure on the government to shut them down and if that doesn't work, then maybe we have to take the law into our own hands. I understand that argument, but what I would simply end with is that when you start going down the pathway where individuals or individual groups decide on their own merits based on their own calculations that their cause is such that the law does not apply to them, where does this end? And I, and I look at I'm, I, I hate slippery slope arguments. I think they're I think slippery slope arguments are lazy, to be perfectly honest, because people will invent all kinds of bullshit. You know, well, if this happens and then blah, blah, blah. I don't like that. But still, I think it does open the door to people saying, well, if they can do that, well, then I guess I can do that. I would think that, you know, if this is an ideal world, and of course, of course, it is not and never will be. We would find ideal solutions to deal with this. So in the lack of an ideal world with ideal solutions, is it ever okay, is it ever condonable to use a serious act of violence to get your way, even if the greater good comes out of that act of violence? I, don't, I, I, I can't wait. I don't know the answer to that question. I think it's a really great one. And I think if we could resolve it, we'd be a lot better off. But I think it's one we have to we look at because there's no question that for most people, certain things like the Nazi rise to power in the 1930s and invasion of Poland, et cetera, et cetera, did mean we could essentially break the law and go to war with another country. Um, extreme circumstances sometimes ex require extreme actions. Who gets to decide those? Who gets to rule on them? Ha. A, a much wiser person than me would have to weigh in on that. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, even if you're just like watching movies or consuming media errantly, it's pretty easy to find examples, especially in fiction, where sometimes every available circumstance justifies committing an act which is unquestionably illegal. And 
even after doing so, you recognize, even though that was justified, it is equally justified for the law to continue to take its mark. Um, I don't know if there are any easy answers for this, and I don't think that we're going to see a justified terrorism clause in our international law any time in the near future. But um, yeah, I, I, I appreciate um, your um, oh, I appreciate your appreciation of the uh, of the nuance on that. Uh, I I uh, uh, actually I can't believe it's been nearly an hour. There's uh, there's one more question.